Hey there! In this video, I'm going to discuss and describe the effects of unity and interconnectedness from the Subjective Effect Index. This is an incredibly profound and transformative experience that most commonly occurs under the influence of heavy dosages of psychedelic, dissociative, and intactogenic compounds. Though it can also occur during well-practiced meditation, deep states of contemplation, during near-death experiences, and even spontaneously without any obvious immediate trigger. This experience and its associated philosophies have huge cultural, religious, and spiritual significance outside of the SEI, to the point where it goes by a wide variety of different names and terms. I will do my best to cover these in more detail towards the end of the video. I've put a lot of effort into formalizing a terminology framework for discussing and describing these effects without resorting to the metaphors and analogies that are quite common within personal trip reports. So unity and interconnectedness refers to the feeling that things which are usually considered as entirely separate are actually interconnected or the same thing entirely. And especially that a person's sense of self has been expanded to include one or more concepts or systems that would usually be considered as separate from them. For example, a person may feel that there is no true separation between themselves and the environment around them. This experience is often interpreted as the removal of a deeply embedded illusion that there ever was a genuine separation between the person's identity and the environment around them in the first place. I have identified four distinct levels of unity and interconnectedness, with level 1 being the simplest and level 4 being the most intense and complex. Level 1. Unity between specific external systems. Level 1 is the perception of a unity between two or more things which are usually perceived as separate from each other within the external environment. All levels of unity and interconnectedness can manifest in endless ways, but common examples of level 1 in particular include a sense of unity between specific living things such as plants or animals and their surrounding ecosystems, a sense of unity between other human beings and the objects that they are currently interacting with. A sense of unity between any number of currently perceivable inanimate objects. A sense of unity between humanity and nature. And finally, a sense of unity between literally any combination of perceivable external systems and concepts. Level 2. Unity between the self and specific external systems. Level 2 is the feeling that one's identity has come to include something within the immediate external environment, particularly something that is currently the subject of a person's attention. This creates a sensation of becoming inextricably connected to, one with, the same as, or unified with that thing. Common examples of level 2 include becoming unified with and identifying with a specific object that one is interacting with, becoming unified with and identifying with another person or multiple people. This is particularly common if they are engaging in sexual or romantic activities. Becoming unified with and identifying with the entirety of one's own physical body. Becoming unified with and identifying with large crowds of people. This is particularly common at raves and music festivals. Level 3 unity between the self and all perceivable external systems. Level 3 is the feeling that one's identity has now come to include the entirety of one's immediately perceivable external environment. This creates a sensation that the boundaries between a person and the world around them have become stripped down, resulting in the compelling perspective that one has become their environment, that the environment therefore has a consciousness, and this conscious environment is now experiencing itself through the point of the individual's own sensory awareness. This level introduces a key component of high-level unity. Once a person's sense of self has become unified with their surroundings, their experience of interacting with those surroundings is fundamentally transformed. While undergoing a state of unity with the immediately perceivable environment, Interacting with an external object can feel as if an entire unified environment is autonomously acting upon itself. For example, if a person experiencing level 3 unity is thirsty, it doesn't feel like a person is going to get water. Instead, it feels like the overall system has identified a requirement within one of its subsystems, 
and is therefore harmoniously rearranging itself to fulfill the requirement. Level 4. Unity between the self and all known external systems. At the highest level, unity can feel as if one is simultaneously their immediately perceivable environment, and also all known systems and concepts that exist outside of that. This will typically include humanity, nature, and the universe in its known entirety. A feeling that's commonly interpreted as becoming one with the universe. When experienced, this effect creates the sudden perspective that one is not a separate agent approaching an external reality, but is instead the entire universe as a whole, experiencing itself, exploring itself, and performing actions upon itself through a specific point in space and time, specifically the person experiencing the effect. People who undergo this experience commonly interpret it as the profound removal of a deeply embedded illusion, with the revelation often described as some sort of transformative awakening or enlightenment. Many reported experiences of level 4 unity and interconnectedness share common themes of a religious and metaphysical nature. Some examples include the sudden and total acceptance of death as an aspect of life and existence. Death is no longer felt to be the destruction of oneself, but simply the end of this specific point in the greater whole, which has always existed and will continue to exist through everything else in which it resides. Therefore, the death of a small part of the whole is seen as inevitable, and not a cause for grief or any emotional attachment. The subjective perspective that one's conception of God, or Godhood, is identical or similar to the nature of existence and the totality of its contents, including oneself. This typically entails the intuition that if the universe contains all power, omnipotence, and all knowledge, omniscience, and is the creator and sustainer of existence, then the universe and its contents could also be understood as God. This realization is extremely similar to the core tenets of the religion of pantheism. The subjective perspective that one, by nature of being the universe, is personally responsible for the design, planning, and implementation of every single specific detail and plot element of one's personal life, the history of humanity, and the entirety of the universe. This naturally includes personal responsibility for all of humanity's sufferings and flaws, but also includes its acts of love and achievements. Academic, philosophical, and religious examples. Similar accounts of experiences with unity and the apparent illusory nature of the self can be found across a surprising number of independent religious, cultural, philosophical, academic, and literary sources to the extent that it would be extremely impractical for me to list them all here. So instead, I'll just summarize a few of the more interesting and easily citable examples. The first examples I'd like to mention are some of the many alternative altered state ontologies that include acknowledgements of this experience. For example, in the 11D altered states of consciousness scale, one of its three major factors is called oceanic boundlessness, and it includes an entire sub-factor titled Experience of Unity. Benny Shannon's book, The Antipodes of the Mind, lists unity as a subtype of spiritual and mystical experience within the chapter on ayahuasca-induced non-ordinary effects of consciousness. The Shulgin Rating Scale describes an experience of high-level unity and insists that learning how to reliably induce it would be the ultimate evolution and the end of the human experiment. Stanislav Grof includes a detailed description of oneness with life and all creation, alongside other similar experiences within his extremely frustrating book titled Realms of the Human Unconscious. The Mystical Experience Questionnaire, or MEQ-30, a widely used and validated psychometric tool for measuring mystical experiences, divides the experience into internal unity and external unity. There are also a number of brief references to states of unity in similar validated psychometric scales I found within this book titled Measures of Religiosity. Moving on to philosophical and spiritual examples, 
Monism is a philosophical position that attributes an inherent oneness or singleness to the overall concept of existence. This philosophy also includes numerous variations and sub-schools of thought such as priority monism, existence monism, substance monism, dual aspect monism, neutral monism, and my personal favourite, dialectical monism. Alan Watts is a philosopher who spoke extensively about the illusory nature of the self. His lectures can be found for free on YouTube, and his book, The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are, describes the philosophies and logic behind this perspective, and I highly recommend it. In the 1901 book Cosmic Consciousness, a study in the evolution of the human mind, psychiatrist Richard Maurice Buke explores his concept of cosmic consciousness, which he defines as a higher form of consciousness than that possessed by the ordinary man. This is a somewhat manically written book, which describes a state of high-level unity and interconnectedness quite directly, including a large number of relevant case studies and examples. Non-dualism is a spiritual concept with an extremely varied set of definitions, found in different forms within many religions. Generally speaking, however, it teaches that the multiplicity of the universe is reducible to one essential reality. There is also even an active and passionate community on Reddit under the name of Our Non-Duality, with around 12,000 subscribers and a wide variety of entertaining non-dualist memes. Samadhi, a Buddhist concept, describes a state of mind in which the consciousness of the experiencing subject becomes one with the experienced object. This state is associated with well-practiced meditation. Ancient Aztec philosophy was largely based on a core concept of Teotl, a unifying life force which created the entire universe from itself, through itself, for itself, and by itself. Therefore, while seemingly separate, all things, including living beings, are ultimately facets of Teotl, and are essentially one. Oceanic feeling, a state from Freudian psychology, is described as the sensation of an indissoluble bond of being connected with the external world in its integral form. The Ego Tunnel, the science of the mind and the myth of the self by Thomas Metzinger, discusses the concept of an illusory self from the perspective of modern neuroscience and psychology. This is one of my favourite books in the world, and I cannot recommend it enough to those who are interested in a modern and scientific take on some of these concepts. I could go on for much longer with this list, but for now I'm just going to mention that once you become aware of this general philosophical concept, it becomes very difficult to ignore the sheer extent at which it permeates into our society's culture and media. I've even seen several direct references to it within children's animated TV shows. I reached enlightenment right here under the Banyan Grove tree. See, this whole swamp is actually just one tree spread out over miles. Branches spread, then sink and take root, and then spread some more. One big living organism, just like the entire world. I get how the tree is one big thing, but the whole world? Sure. You think you're any different from me, or your friends, or this tree? If you listen hard enough, you can hear every living thing breathing together. You can feel everything growing. We all have the same roots, and we are all branches of the same tree. What? I'm going to be all around you, in your nose and your dreams and socks. I'll be a part of you in your earth mind. It's going to be great. Dude, stop saying all this crazy nonsense. It's making me messed up. I'm 13. You're messing me up. Without any question or hesitation, I undoubtedly believe that unity and interconnectedness is by far the most profound and significant state of mind that the psychedelic experience has to offer. I've been fascinated by this effect for around a decade now, and first came to learn of it as a teenager through the numerous first-hand accounts given to me by my close personal friends. 
This effect was further solidified in my mind as something of extreme significance when I found direct discussion of it through the philosophical writings and works of Anna Motz. I then proceeded to dive headfirst into meditation and obsessively contemplating the apparent illusory nature of the self on a daily basis. I even found that on more than one occasion, while trip-sitting my friends during heavy psychedelic experiences, I could actually lead them into a state of high-level unity by simply saying the right things and kind of guiding them through a sort of cognitive process of realization. However, despite my borderline obsession with this subjective effect and its associated philosophical frameworks, I found that no matter how heavy of a dosage of a psychedelic I consumed, I could never experience this state of mind for myself. This led me to the conclusion that regardless of how common an experience this was for other psychedelic users, my extreme fascination with it must be the exact thing that's preventing me from experiencing it for myself, something which inevitably led me to let my guard down for what was to come. Approximately two years later, while under the influence of a heavy dosage of ayahuasca, I found myself undergoing a state of level 4 unity for the first time in my life. This then happened on two separate occasions within a month, and were by far the most profound and life-changing experiences I had ever undergone in my entire life. In the years after these two experiences, I have since undergone a state of high-level unity twice on two separate occasions, both of which were under the influence of 4-HO-MET and were also less than a month apart. And I cannot for the life of me understand or figure out any causal factors or correlations between the triggering of this experience. As far as I can tell, it seems that certain individuals are more prone to it than others, but almost everyone will inevitably experience this effect if they trip regularly enough over a long period of time. It does not seem to be dependent on the dosage of the psychedelic in question, although set and setting seem to be somewhat of a factor. Situations involving beautiful nature, deep contemplation, philosophical conversation can also often cause it to come about, but not in a reliable or reproducible fashion. It therefore seems to me that it must organically arise out of a situation in which a person comes to a conclusion of their own accord, or perhaps where some subconscious process of the mind is allowed to autonomously arise in an independent manner. At this point, I cannot deny that I personally believe that the common conception of a separate self is merely a construct of human perception. In fact, I would even go further and state that based on my extensive research and personal experience, that this position is even scientifically and philosophically justifiable. However, I do want to make it clear that I don't have any desire to try and convince people of that here. Instead, I simply aim to document this experience in a manner that is as comprehensive and hopefully as reasonable as possible. This is with the hope that people who are far more intelligent than me can someday use this description as a framework for furthering our collective understanding of this profound and absolutely fascinating state of mind. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks so much for watching. Now that I don't need to worry about views or profit motives, I'm starting to find the idea of making content for YouTube a lot more fun and interesting again. So unless something changes, I'll probably be posting a lot more content over the next several months, starting with a niche but enthusiastic review series on altered states ontologies outside of the subjective effect index. I'll probably start with the 11D ASC on that one and then maybe move on to the DMT Nexus's hyperspace lexicon. If you're looking to join our community and contribute to the field of formalized subjective effect documentation, we do actually have a semi-private but very active Discord server, and we're always looking for more replicators, artists, web developers, academics, general enthusiasts, etc, etc. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to send me a message on Discord at josiekins hash 1066, and if you're a good fit, then I would love to invite you in. Uh, thanks again, and I'll probably see you next time.